Hello, my name is Linda Stinson. I'm a student physical therapist assistant at Jefferson State Community College. Today, I will be doing a YouTube micro teach presentation on ascites. So, what is ascites? It is the abnormal accumulation of fluid between the abdomen and the abdominal organs, more specifically, the peritoneal cavity. As you can see from this picture, this is a normal abdomen with no fluid buildup between the organs, and this is a, a picture of the abdomen with fluid buildup approximately four liters. Pathology of ascites. It begins with increased pressure in the blood vessels that leads to vasodilation of the vessels in the viscera, causing a decreased amount of blood going to the kidneys. The renin angiotensin aldosterone system is triggered, allowing water and sodium to retain. At the same time, an excess of lymph is created that leaks into the abdomen causing the accumulation of fluid to occur. As you can tell from this picture, this is a CAT scan that was done, and this fluid buildup is surrounding the liver. So what causes ascites? The most common cause is cirrhosis. However, other causes can include cancer, alcohol abuse, tuberculosis, or TB, portal vein thrombosis, or congestive heart failure, CHF. Signs and symptoms to be aware of with patients with ascites. Pain, discomfort, weight gain, difficulty breathing, swelling, decreased appetite, shortness of breath, infection, hernias, soreness, or coughing. can occur in patients with ascites. They have a 10% chance of developing an infection called spontaneous bacterial peritonitis, or SBP. Causes, this causes kidney failure and mental confusion if not treated. A study was done and it was determined that there was a high existence of bacterial DNA in patients with ascites that was caused by cirrhosis. This infection increases death rates and is the reason that ascites must be treated quickly and accurately. Diagnosing ascites. There must be at least 500 milliliters of fluid accumulation in the abdomen. The initial test that is done is paracentesis. Paracentesis is the removal of fluid from the abdomen with a needle this fluid is tested for infection and the cause of ascites. Ultrasounds can also be done. They're used to detect fluid volumes in the abdomen. CT scans can also be done. They're used to examine smaller amounts of fluid in the abdomen. As you can tell from this picture, this is a uh, ultrasound and the clear space is actually the fluid buildup. Precautions and contraindications. Be aware of positioning, edema, distension in the abdomen that they might be having, and fluid intake and output. Contraindications for PT. A fever above 100.5, stomach pain, blood in the stool or vomit, yellow color of the skin or eyes, also known as jaundice, bruising easily, and confusion. If you notice any of these, contact a medical doctor right away. Prognosis. Several cases of ascites result in liver transplants that are necessary for survival. Five years after ascites develops, only 30 to 40 percent survive. Medical treatment options. This depends on the severity of the fluid accumulation in the abdomen. Paracentesis, which we mentioned earlier, can be done with the injection of albumin to reduce further accumulation. They can also um, reduce their sodium intake, specifically salt, to 2,000 
MG daily. And also a shunt can be put into their liver that is called TIPS. And lastly, a liver transplant is done. Preferred practice patterns for ascites. They fall under 6A, 6E, 6H, and 7A. However, 7A is generally more focused on due to the edema and integumentary issues that ascites patients encounter. Nodding The pathophysiology is underlying cause such as liver disease or alcoholism. Impairments include decreased range of motion and difficulty breathing. These impairments can lead to functional limitations including decreased ability to, to perform bed mobility and transfers. The functional limitations can lead to disabilities that affect their ADLs including eating and ambulating. As physical therapist assistants, we should focus on two important interventions, bed mobility and education. Because of the fluid accumulation, they tend to lose range of motion, so instructing on how to properly sit up, lie down, and maneuver in bed is important for them. Education. This is the most important. Breathing techniques should be taught to maintain respiratory function and prevent pneumonia. They should also be positioned, be educated on positioning every two hours. Typically, the Fowler's position is most comfortable for ascites patients. This is a picture of Fowler's position that they typically like. Although there is no cure for ascites, prevention, risk reduction, and education are the most important things. As PTAs, we should not take this lightly, as it can cause death. As PTAs, we should also take into account all impairments, functional limitations, and disabilities, and focus on keeping them as functional as possible. Thank you for listening to this presentation. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new today. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me on the discussion board. Thank you.